Yo, what's up? Joshua Casper here, and we're back with this dubstep kick creation tutorial. This is part two. This is the kick we're going to be making. And today, part two is going to be the noise. I know it doesn't sound like much all by itself, but it really adds to the character of the kick. And as you can hear from the result, it's pretty good. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna turn this off and I'm gonna come down to the operator down here. This is the sub part of the kick that we created in the first tutorial. So now what I'm gonna do is just duplicate that so I can get everything, the operator's already in there. And I can also have this MIDI and I'm just gonna go ahead and solo that channel and I'm gonna come into the instruments and pull over a new instance of operator. For this, we are gonna use all four oscillators. For this first one, we only have to adjust a couple of things. We're gonna adjust the decay time and the sustain time. First thing we're gonna do is bring the sustain all the way down and that's negative infinity. And then we're just gonna adjust the decay to about 450 milliseconds or thereabouts. We can also turn it up so that we can hear better. Okay, great. Uh, oscillator two, we're gonna bring the chorus down to 0.5. We're gonna bring the, ne uh, the level up to about negative six, there or thereabouts. And as you can hear, the sound is really different and that's because of the way we have the oscillator set up. The way we have it right now is this oscillator is sent to this oscillator and this oscillator affects the sound that was made from this oscillator. And we're gonna do that through all four of these, so uh, the sound's gonna get really interesting. Cool, and as far as the envelope for oscillator two, we're gonna bring the sustain down all the way again, and we're gonna bring the decay way up to about 11 seconds. Great, and then on oscillator three, we are going to change the wavetable to a square D, and we need to turn it all the way up. Great, and we could also turn the chorus up just a tad. That's sounding pretty nice, and that's all we need to do there. And on the fourth oscillator again, turn it all the way up. And as we turn up the chorus here, you're gonna hear it get to that kind of white noisy type hit. And that sounds pretty good. And the way we make it just that white noisy top end of the spectrum, the frequency spectrum, we're just gonna use a filter. We're gonna use something called the high ladder right here. And we're gonna turn it down to about, I don't know, 1.77 sounds good to me. We can also turn the resonance all the way down. We don't need any of that on this, this particular part of the kick. And that's pretty much it for the second part of the dubstep kick drum that we're making. If we put those together right now, this is the sound we have. All right, that sounds pretty good. That sounds the way it's supposed to. And we're gonna add one more instance of operator to get a little bit more of a mid-range sound and more of a punchy sound to add it to these other two instances. And then in the fourth tutorial, we're gonna put them inside of instrument racks and add final effects to them, including compression and EQ and the limiter and everything like that. That sounds pretty good. That's where it's supposed to be right now. It doesn't sound like the final product, but that high end frequency hit, we really need that to add character to our final kick drum. The next tutorial, we're gonna add some transient and mid-tones to our kick to give it a, a lot more punch, actually. And then in the fourth tutorial, we're gonna wrap it all up into an instrument rack and add some additional effects and compressors just to get everything sounding perfect. Anyway, I hope you learned something and I will see you in tutorial three.